Right, so we're doing something different today. We've got some very, very special guests in the building. Um, yeah, Blue Story, a film of a generation right now. Trust. We got the uh, the creator, the visionary in the building, Rap Man. Introduce yourself for the people. Yo, my name's Rap Man, and um, I am the writer, the director, the creator, narrator of the Blue Story movie. Exactly. Now, mm-hmm. joining us as well, we got the main lead, man like <laughs> come on, come on. man like Timmy, but in real life <laughs> is <laughs> you got your boy here, Stephen Odebola. Yeah, man. And also the main lead female who uh, stole a few hearts in the show Aww. and the film. <laughs> Introduce yourself to the people as well. Carla Simone Spence. There we go. And we've also got the T for Art from Wizard Radio here as well. Hi. And we've got four musics, Crash Williams. What's up? There we go. Some energy in the room. That's good. <laughs> <laughs> but let's start with talking about Rap Man, your, your journey. So from being a musician yourself mm. to doing yearly wrap ups, dropping Blue Story, but the, you know, the more Shiro story kind of format mm. version, the musical kind of narrative. So now this feature length film, obviously we don't see the, the old school blue story stuff anymore. That got taken off quick time. There's still some bootleggers up there. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 Like, some yeah. old school bootleggers are there still. Oh, right. So <laughs> no, I just, yeah, I was gonna take it down now. It's getting on my nerves. Whatever goes but, yeah. on the internet, yeah. It won't ever yeah, go down. It's, it's a myth. Yeah. Mm. But we're at this point now where you're doing, it's a big production with Paramount Pictures. How does it feel? Cause this is a big moment in UK culture right now. Um, It feels good. I worked hard to get to this position, man. I mm. put in hella work. And um, to have people like Paramount and BBC behind it is obviously a special moment. But the best part about it so far is at this point now, while I'm speaking to you, only the preview screens have gone out to the public. Mm. And the feedback's just been mad. That's yeah. what makes me feel good. You know what I'm saying? Like, just normal people going out their way, leaving their house to go buy a ticket to watch a film and then coming out and just feeling touched and moved and feeling like they want to reach out to me through social media, just knowing that they probably won't get a reply because it's crazy right now, but <laughs> no, they don't Hollywood, even care. Hollywood are people, right? They just care, eh? <laughs> no, no, but yeah. I can't speak to everyone. I'll be on social media every second of the minute. Mm. But um, it's just dope, man, the feedback and the fact that obviously I could do it at a higher scale when I was doing it on the smallest screen for the longest. So yeah. it's good, man. I feel blessed. I feel blessed right now. Yeah, I mean, we've seen the posters and, uh, you know, a lot of advertisement, a lot of money being spent yeah, on that. Yeah, they, they didn't shy away from this. You know, a lot of times these type of films... You see them in one cinema. One cinema, is, yeah. one poster <laughs> in that cinema, yeah. maybe. And, um, nah, so if this flops, we can only be angry at ourselves. Listen, it's not going out. No, no, but it won't yeah. flop because it's already popping off. Like. We don't need to add fail safes into this. We don't <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> <laughs> But No, but they put a lot behind it and this. And it's good to see that films like this can get pushed like a Marvel movie. Yeah, you know? yeah. Like, stop. Boy, Blue Story, Avengers of Ultraman story. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But um, i got to say as well, for people listening right now, there are going to be a few spoilers in there. Not too heavy, but we've got some stuff coming up. But if you haven't seen the film, turn off now and come back to it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I, I, I feel like a spoiler can ruin your whole experience Listen, of the film. Like we need to do as well. You can't be telling me. No, nah, not turn it off. <laughs> come on, you know this show's popping off, so listen to it, but, you know, just be prepared, man. Yeah, but um, I read an article somewhere that you ended up, like, joining a gang, like, that basically, like, people accused you of being of when you were kind of growing up. Yeah. Yeah. And your history is in Deptford, right? Yeah, yeah. As well. So obviously Blue Story is set between Peckham and Deptford. Mm. Get of Boys versus Peckham. Yeah. Uh how much of Blue Story is actually your story though? The whole journey of Timmy throughout school is practically my life. Yeah. Um, the whole of one day just going to school and being the bad guy because you live in an area is literally fully my life. Like I went to school in Campbell next door to Peckham and lived in Deptford. And at the time, obviously, there was in a massive war. You know, Deptford was like the main area, and Nuke was the main area for getaways. And obviously, Campbell, everyone in the school was lived in Peckham. Mm. So um, it's all good in year seven and year eight. But as you start getting towards the year ten, year eleven, the later part of school it starts getting a bit sticky. For the young, people. yeah, the young brothers that your brethren, they kind of followed their older brother's footsteps, so they're kind of like. You no, know, they're territorial now. Yeah. You know, Peckham's their end, and you know what? You don't even live around it. Right? It starts off just like you don't even live around it. Mm. You know, it's furthermore. Why are you coming to this school? Furthermore, we shouldn't even be letting you come to this school. Yeah. Next thing you know, you're having fights in the playground with someone that was your best friend. Mm. So a lot of it was based on my childhood, and um, outside the school, a lot of it's just based on things that I witnessed or a friend witnessed or loads of different situations we went through. Because after I left school, I started hanging around with the 
so-called ghetto boys when they came out. So you started seeing a lot of the things that you see in the film, you know? So you st a lot of the things that happen in the film is the stuff that I've witnessed or a friend of mine witnessed or something I just missed, but I know what happened, you know yeah. what I'm saying? I mean, that makes it more close to home for people li like watching it, like seeing it as basically your, part of your story. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? And like a lot of people, when they kind of the build up for this film, there was a few people that were like, well, not a few people, a lot of people that were like, we're going to need to watch this. This is key. But there's obviously, as you get with everything, there are a few skeptics out there 100%. that are going to be like, oh, I've seen this before, or this is the same themes that we've seen. <laughs> and why does it end this way? Or why is it going to be like that? But what makes Blue Story, using all the experiences that you've had, making it into a feature length film, why should people go and watch this film? Because they haven't seen nothing like this before. Like it's that's that's a blatant lie first and foremost they've never seen nothing like this before a feature film with the music element for one is already a usp we only ever see that in musicals and it's yeah, not yeah. done by rap so other than that the story ain't nothing like any of the rest of the genres like like there's i don't even since this is a spider show we're gonna go too deep into it but how many <laughs> films based in this world do you see time jumps bro that's true you don't see time jumps in that because the story is so too deep Mm. This story is 3D, like it comes at you, you feel, you go on a journey with the characters. When something happens to them, good for them, you're celebrating. When something bad happens for them, you feel it in your chest like it's happened to you. Yeah. So there is no story like this. And um, people were saying that it looks like another hood film. That's how we, we done that trailer on purpose. Like mm. that. You know, we didn't, we would rather you go into the cinema not expecting anything can leave wild. Yeah. Then us put all the depth and levels in the trailer for you to come out and say, okay, well, we've seen it all. I hear that. So go watch the film and then come to me and tell me you've seen something like that before because Blue Story stands alone, man. It's mm. one of a kind, can't be replicated. It's special, you know what I mean? Yeah, and I see Carla nodding her head over there. Well. <laughs> yeah. She knows, she knows, you know what I mean? It's not, she's not like, it's just, it's, it's just unique. Yeah, I you mean, people were in the cinema and I went to go watch it, like, absolutely screaming and shouting, clapping. Like. And I didn't even pay you to say that, that's what I'm saying. There you go, see, No, but that's the truth, though. Honest. But that's the truth, I'll be real, like, we've been to a lot of screenings and we've got feedback from the screenings we weren't in, and it's, it's the same across the board. Mm. Like it's across the board, people stand up clapping. Yeah, yeah. People leave emotional, people have hearts racing and you don't get that from every film. Like, do you know how hard it is? Filmmakers go to school for years to get that feeling from an audience and it's yeah, hard yeah. to come by. So no one can't take nothing away from this movie that I'm accepting anyway. You can say what you want, your opinion is your opinion. But if it doesn't agree with my one, I don't believe in it. Listen, man, <laughs> yeah. you know I mean? so that's it. Yeah. That's it, yeah. But let's, talk, let's bring in Steven and Carla yeah. as well right now. So. Basically, when you guys got presented with the opportunity to be in this film, like, why did you kind of initially want to get involved with the project? I was happy, man. I knew what Rapman was capable of. It's funny because originally, I didn't ever want to act in anything that was to do with gang culture because of the way it's portrayed. I just didn't like the way people were telling that side of the story. Mm. But then when I was when I was when I watched um, the Blue Story trilogy on YouTube, and I knew that he was auditioning for that. Hold on, were you watching the bootleg version? The older version, yeah. When I was watching that, and I kind of knew that it had like a positive message, I instantly wanted to get involved because I knew how it was going to be told. Yeah. So yeah. I was like Stephen. I didn't want to be in a film like this either. But the character of Leah is just so different to how they portray women in these kind of films. Mm. She's not a stereotype. She's not this sex symbol. You know, she's like the moral compass of the film. Yeah. She's got her head screwed on, and she wants the best for Timmy. So. Yeah, I just really like playing her. Yeah, I mean, obviously, when you kind of get into films which revolve around gang culture, sometimes if you haven't had that main experience from it, it's kind of hard to channel that. I mean, how different was it for kind of studying the role compared to like Wannabe or The Legend of Tarzan or something like that? Um, for me, I've done his research. Listen, for real, I'm like, okay. I'm crossing my legs now, yeah? Yeah, I'm done. 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 Yeah, i am Mine was different because it's a younger character, so it was just getting into the mindset of playing a teenager again, basically, yeah. yeah. I mean, let's break down both characters as well. Like, Timmy, mine's looking a bit soft yeah, at the start a, of the he's film. A, he's a laid-back, reserved guy, man. He's not street-wise. You don't know nothing. <laughs> yeah, I mean, obviously, we're going through that kind of scene where we're seeing Timmy kind of be a bit shy, can't chat to any goals. <laughs> man's stumbling. But, 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 <laughs> 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 moving mad with it. And, like... When it came to kind of studying for that character, 
kind of like how easy was it to channel Timmy for you? Are you similar? Well, were you similar? No, 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 yeah. no, no, no. I might I'm say not, I'm like, not, yeah. Listen, man, for respect on my name, man. <laughs> <laughs> no, man, Timmy shine. I kind of just, obviously, I was surrounded by a lot of, like in school, you get, you're, you're surrounded by so many different characters. So just remembering how certain people used to act, it was obviously some guys in my in my squad, in my, in my batch, that were kind of shy when they were moving to girls. Mm. And I just remember how they act and, you know, I kind of just used that to get into that character. Man channeled other people, but... <laughs> 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 and, um, yeah, Leo, so that character, mm-hmm. Carla. So, obviously, you kind of start off as the love interest. You know, Timmy can't even talk to the character yeah. at all. It was kind of <laughs> shambolic still. <laughs> <laughs> but it was like, how pivotal would you think that, like, Leah's character or the character of Leah was in the early stage of kind of developing this school set in film because it if you go from the beginning of the film to the end of the film mm-hmm. it's completely contrasting yeah. Yep. yeah nothing that's that's why it's one of a kind literally like it shows the innocence of like the children do you know what I mean because obviously it shows the big contrast from Stephen to the end like how he got to where he got to and it's just so nice you know everyone really enjoys like the whole friendship and just the different types of people yeah do you know what I mean it's not there's not that many stereotypes that, that there's one guy who's a ladies' man. There's one guy who's the class clown. We're all different, and it's just yeah. yeah. I think it, I think what I liked is and uh, Crash and Latifah, you can guys can get involved as well. Is like you made it very relatable. Like I feel like people outside of maybe like South London or London or something in general or cities will be able to understand the character and kind of see themselves in there somewhat. Do you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. My look, my manager and Ty Ty from Rock Nation flew in from New York just to come to the Premier to watch it. And he was crying. He cried. He's from. He's been, lived in New York his whole life. Yeah. He ain't been in South London. He's older. He's an older man, and it hit him. It don't matter. You don't have to be from London to to understand love. You know what I'm saying? Mm. To understand friendship. You know what I'm saying? Like it's these things are internationally. You know, we all go through these things. So when a friend sees another friend heartbroken, you can relate because you you relate to your own heartbreak. Yeah. You know, so it's a story that everyone can relate to. It's just set in a world that not everyone's been in. You should have put an R&B song on the soundtrack. Have you, have you heard the soundtrack? Yeah. So, well, but there's a couple R&B songs. Another hard hitting one though. Like, you know, well, one there's a couple of yeah, man. What you I told Georgia, you're not, I told Georgia you're not happy. <laughs> I told Georgia. I mean, you know what I mean? Someone needs to be crying to get, give the Kleenex out in every single feeling. You know what I mean? Yeah. People like that. But like for you two, Crash and Latifa, like how did you kind of feel? Like were you able to relate? Did you see yourselves in the characters? I can't necessarily like relate. I've never like been in that um, scene, but it was sort of like I did cry. Because I did, I That's cried deep. a lot because I sort of, like, you were right, you do connect with the characters and, like, how they were from the beginning to the end. It's sort of like I felt like I knew them and I was like, oh, my God. Yeah, like, it was really emotional for me anyway. Do you cry a lot? Cry? No. Like, I, I feel don't happy. Cry. It's weird. Yeah. yeah. I feel happy. I feel like we've done, done what we needed to do. Yeah. And if you're saying you're not a crier, because you know some girls are just criers. If you're not Shut even a crier. Okay, so I'm, a, I'm a crier, but not at films. Oh, like, no, yeah, I don't yeah. cry at film. When's the last time you cried at a film? Oh, it's been can a long time. I don't cry at film. Have you cried at a film before? Yeah, like a love story. Like, Just say yes. She can't. She can't remember mm. the last yeah. time she cried in a film. Yeah, but that says it all, you know. And this is a typical hood film. Did you cry at any of the other hood films? No, 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 no. <laughs> there you go in it. So let's listen. Let's, let's not lie. Some people probably bored when in Kid Hood at the end. Though. Oh well, no, no I, I did well. I watched that, and it, that was hard to. Yeah, that, yeah, I didn't yeah. cry, but it was deep though. Yeah, at yeah. the time when I was a kid. Yeah, two thousand five time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was deep when I watched it. Yeah, I mean. Let's talk about the development of like, I feel like for me, I can only speak for myself in this and Crash and Latifah, you guys can get involved in everyone else as well. But like there was a contrast of the word gang in the film at the beginning. Cause you know, you have a gang of friends and there's yeah. not really a negative connotation with that. You man are rapping, doing beats on the bus and mm-hmm. oh. just having fun with it. You know what I mean? And obviously the girls are involved and then obviously you at the house party, everything's going off, going mad, no spoilers there still. Watch the film. <laughs> <laughs> but it's one of them situations where we see that and then we see like Switcher and Madder and that environment and what people think of when they see gangs initially, like how important was it to show the positive and the negative connotations of the word gang in the early stages of the film as well? Um, it's always, uh, for me, it had to be, you had to see what was going on in the world. In the playground, when they're fully in a whole another world, they're not even think, what they care about is getting a dance with a girl and getting a girl's number and, you know, getting something off a girl compared to another group who's literally just down the road outside the school gates 
sitting there thinking about money and making sure that no one doesn't come to try and violate them. Like, it, it's, it's just how it went. Because I remember being in school and then I remember being on the wall with Madder and them lot. So when I'm thinking, when I used to be on the wall with the, with the Madders of my area, I used to think to myself, it's crazy. If to work, on what I'm doing here now, there's someone right now in school just asking for a dance off a girl or trying to get a girl's phone number, not knowing that they could end up here, just like how I was. Mm. So it was always just, that was literally just my life. I always used to see it like that. So when I'll be with the group of the man, then whatever you want to call it, a gang on my local hangout, I used to think to myself, there's a kid in school right now that doesn't know they're going to end up here as well. So it was important, man. You know, also I noticed as well, is that there's no, like, it's probably like a cliche thing to say, but there's, there's not really any, like, real father figures in it. No, Especially, not. like, when you, like, you, you won't necessarily see that from that perspective. Because obviously, like, you know, I've grown up in an area that's similar to, to, to what happens in the movie. And, you know, when you're younger, obviously, you're kind of subconsciously seeing, you know, the olders as those kind of father figures. But then you actually get to their age and then you realise, rah, they it's like the blind leading the blind it literally is the blind and it's the like blind. you know the way that the way that you kind of did that from the beginning to the end just shows it especially like with the end like not giving it away it was kind of like everyone was laughing and then all of a sudden it's like whoa you know it hits you and it's like you know it's just a cycle of blind leading the blind so you know that's exactly what it is Mark. yeah that's exactly what it is um because, yeah, you're right. There was a lot of male role models, and I've done that purposely um, because it does make a difference. You know, not knocking anything away from single parents, single moms raising it. They're doing the best they can. And it's their best that they can do. It always would be good to have a positive male in their life as well because it makes a difference. You know what I'm saying? Like, So who knows how that story would have ended if dad was in that picture? You know, who actually knows? If there was a real, if there was a good dad, because not all dads are good, if there was a good dad, positive role model, would they have ended up the way? Who knows? Who knows, man? I just want to know, like, do you think the cycle will ever end? Nah, it won't never end. Only because it's just not, but it's not a, a road hood gang thing. It's just a human being thing. People get to territory over things that they love, you know, and things that they have. Whatever you feel like is yours, you're going to want to fight for it. And that's never going to stop to the beginning of the time. Whether it's this estate that I grew up in my whole life or your company that you built and you you don't want no one else to come in for your company, so you're going to do whatever you can to sabotage your competition. It's just how people is. Some people use weapons, other people use slander and bad words and try to do, to be little people's reputations, but it's just, it's just humans. It's just human nature. It will never end. Yeah, I mean, when we're talking about olders in society and stuff like that, obviously it's a mention, like you said, in the film a lot. We see three generations. Yeah. Because we see... Marco, then we see Switchard, and we see, I don't even know what the guy's name from Tottenham was. <laughs> <laughs> it, wasn't, it wasn't important. It wasn't that like, important. It wasn't important, you know. It wasn't important in the sense, that's how like deep it is. We never actually, <laughs> when I think about it, we never actually gave his name out. You know what, there was an edit of the story, but, yeah. but I don't think, um, Maybe you didn't. no, we didn't. In the edit that you sort of seen, I've I never put a name yeah. out there. Yeah, I, know his, I know his name. <laughs> yeah, you know his name, <laughs> but you know it because maybe you've read it. But he's that way. He never said no, it in the film. Oh, he says so you know it. it. He says it. Um. Oh yeah. Well, yeah. No, he says I my big cousin. No, but he says. His oh name yeah. Oh, well. at the end when and I was coming up. Rapid, yeah, when you're rapping. Yeah, you know I mean, yeah. So I say at the end. Okay. That yeah. Last one word. Um. But he does. His name wasn't <laughs> really important. But it was who he was. It was yeah, just I mean, the fact of who he was and the influence. It's true because if you think about it, right? Like if we're talking about Michael Ward's character, which is Marco, right? He's there chilling, doing his thing. But then they go from watching a movie and like. Michael Ward's character being like a child, yeah. being so gassed to watch the film. Yeah, I know. <laughs> and then like his brother's like kind of there with him, but then he goes off and then he's like, oh, do you want to like, I'll come if you want me to come. But it's not like, he's not willing to do that and stuff like that. And then the brother gets at him saying, I shouldn't have to ask you that. And that's, you know I mean? that's putting weight on shoulders. Yeah. And that's, mm, that's someone who's like, what, 15, 16, being pressured by like, how old were you kind of making like, picture <sighs> and others like? Early 20s. Early 20s, say 25? Could be around that, yeah. Just early twenties. I would, I'll say maybe twenty twos, twenty threes. Yeah, yeah, me, yeah, around that age. So you, you know. see that, and then obviously my guy comes with that luscious coat at the end, yeah, from Tottenham. <laughs> yeah, and it's like <laughs> could li it's a big man, you know. That's how it goes. Like you go from just a kid in the playground, like mm. a Marco or whatever, 
Then you end up proper, like if you are really that way inclined, you can end up like a switcher. Yeah. But then the smart ones like switcher realize, wait a minute, this reputation that doesn't shooting people doesn't pay any bills, doesn't buy me any diamonds, doesn't get me any cars. So then you kind of advance to what you call the suave road man, which was what the cousin was, mm. you know, where he's got his reputation, but he's got money now. He's about business now. Yeah. He's also that 44, thing, He's older. So, yeah. <laughs> so he's like, no, but he's older now. So it's like, you kind of evolve, but not everyone makes that stage. Mm -hmm. Some people don't make it to switch your stage. You die before then. Some people don't make it to Tyrone stage. You die before then, you know, but really and truly, Tyrone, who the older cousin is, probably would have had, went on to live an amazing life, but, Without saying too much, his family kind of got him back involved. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. It's just how it goes, man. But literally, you do advance in the steps of the road. Like, yeah. you, you realise later on, you just want to make money. So, mm. you know. I mean, if we're talking like, you know, like Carlo, like if we're thinking about environments where it don't even have to be older male figures as well. Do you know what I mean? Like, obviously, a lot of people run with the motif that you kind of need a male figure in your life. Mm -hmm. Like, I don't think you always do. Sometimes you do. I don't think all the time when you're going. I, I you can't know, know. It's hard for me to say because I had both parents. You know, with me, mm. I'll be real, yeah. I was like, I was a teenager and I was like getting to a stage where nobody could chat to me. My parents couldn't chat to me because they couldn't relate to what was happening in the streets. My older brother, who'd already been there and done whatever, if it weren't for him, I probably would have went down that route. Mm. Like I was real close to getting down that route and he always had to like proper do stuff to get me away from that. So in a sense where my dad was my role mo was a role model as well because he was hard working whatever, but my brother, he was a role model because he'd been there and he could relate to the things I was going through. Yeah. So he kind of steered me away from that growing up, so. But imagine yeah. if his older brother Wasn't was telling him, you need to get active, mm. mate. What are you doing sitting at home? You need mm. to be on the roads getting busy. Yeah. Then where would he be now? Would he probably wouldn't be sitting here. He would be, be sitting in a yeah. jail cell yeah. Yeah. somewhere. You'd be, you'd be seeing blue lights. Yeah, you just yeah, never you know. know. <laughs> you never know. Like this Please is what I'm saying. Like it does make meaning. a difference. Yeah. Like, no, don't yeah. get twisted. Boys love off their mums differently, mm. but yeah, you need someone like a guy will always look at a woman like you don't know what it's like to have a penis. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, and you need someone who has to kind of show you how to walk properly. You know, yeah. and it it makes a difference. It definitely does. But then also like, uh, Carla, like your your character, kind of. Pulled, showed him showed him something else. I mean, obviously, he wasn't really about that she life. She tried. <laughs> <laughs> She's not best. She, yeah. but, but, like, you know, she held it down. Obviously, there's yeah. a key part in that mm -hmm. where I really, I really like that you put that in there because it was like she was backing it as well. It wasn't mm. just this whole like cliche thing of oh she's crying or whatever yeah yeah that. she you know, she 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 was literally yeah. right she, she, right had it she, <laughs> was, she, she held was it down like, this, this was, she was bowdy like she was just a strong character <laughs> i think um mm. a lot of girls are gonna feel it you know yeah. even yeah. just even in the playground she proper yeah. got involved and defended him like mm. but she knew he wouldn't want to speak up against his friend yeah. so she yeah, got yeah. in and said look why are you letting your brother brainwash you saying what everyone's thinking mm. she was a good character man she was a good character but you know what was quite interesting about uh, your characters, yeah, and the whole beef and all that stuff, yeah. I feel like, like, see, I've I've seen that before, yeah. I've seen that like in in real life, those sort of situations before. And what's quite interesting is like, say they're not necessarily friends in in the in the instance I'm talking about. They're not necessarily friends, and then after the fight, they become best friends. And it's usually because there was no tools involved, and it was just fist fights and obviously I'm not really promoting violence and stuff like that but obviously it's got to a place now where people record fights and so obviously there's that kind of humiliation that's there for life and yeah you can't necessarily be boys like that yeah, yeah, yeah. but um you know in terms of like channeling that aspect of it like male pride and stuff like that how how difficult or easy was it for you to kind of channel that well I just put it there as it is, like I just did it. I just figured that like, anyone that knows films or follows stories will get the gist of what I was saying. But I just put it in there, as I know how it used to go. Like mm. I know how certain men, if they lost a the fight, I know that they don't want to go home and tell their brother they lost a the fight. Cause their brother's gonna go mad at them, like to say, "Listen, what you mean you lost a fight? You better go and win the fight now." You know yeah. what I'm saying? So I just put it how it was. Like when you put something that's based on reality. You don't have to really steer it. You just put it there and anyone with eyes will see it. I hear that still. I mean, I think when you're looking at like just generations of people just getting involved, like it's always going to be tricky because it really depends on all the influences and that as well. Like even let's talk about, let's go back a bit from what Crash was saying about the, the playground scene. 
where things have happened now. I'm not saying any spoilers, so you know you're happy. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> like, but obviously that's a, that's kind of an intense scene. That's kind of the the beginning of that's, the end. That's like my favorite scene. Really? Okay. When I watched that, it was one of my favorite scenes because when they turn, when Timmy goes left and Marco goes right. Cause because I know for me when I wrote it, that's when it all begins. Yeah, you know. So every time I see that, it always breaks my heart a little bit. Mm. Cause up to then they're just they're it's separable. Calm. Yeah, you know what I'm saying they're mm. brothers. They're literally just brothers from different mothers, and it's just to see something just get escalated. It really does escalate out of control. Yeah, but you know. But when you come in, when you just got had a madness, mm. and you just don't want no one to touch you. Yeah. yeah. So then when you're getting your face slapped, it's like. It could have been his mum, he probably would have hit her back. Like, that's how, he was just on edge, so it's just, yeah, yeah. who was in the right, who was in the wrong there, everyone everyone overreacted, and yeah, it yeah. just, from there. I always hold my breath like, oh, man. Here, here we, we go. go again. Here yeah, we yeah. go. That's every, time, that's every <laughs> single time I watch it. Mm. That's right, okay, here we go. But, um, yeah. yeah, it's deep, man. Yeah, I mean, Carla, that scene, mm-hmm. right? Because obviously something happens in the scene, that's a bit mad, shit happens still, but it's yeah. life, so we move, but like, for both of you as well, so Stephen as well, like how did you kind of prepare for that scene? Because obviously you know things are going to unfold. I was just kind of just seeing it as she's just defending Timmy. Because the thing is, they were all friends. She was mm. friends with Marco, she was friends with Dwayne, all of them were all yeah. just close friends. It was kind of like, what the hell is going on? Like, why are you overreacting? And it just got blown out of proportion because everyone kind of just circled in and you know, people get their pride gets involved and they're just getting a bit hyped up. And it just, it shouldn't have happened really. But mm. yeah, she was just talking to her friend, like, what are you doing? Yeah, I agree with what Rep says, man. It's the truth, man. It's what happens in schools nowadays. Mm. It happens the oohs and the ahs, yeah. man. They just yeah. escalate things so yeah. much. Ooh, yeah. Ooh, ahs. It's just, like, oh, man. Listen, it's, it's funny sometimes when you're in the, the background surrounding it, yeah? Like, but obviously it's not good if you're actually in it and obviously it yeah. went yeah. where it went. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Because, like, for me, I was a head teacher and, like, every time I was a fight in the playground, he'd be like, if you're watching it, you're just as important as the person in the fight. That makes sense. Yeah, you can kind of hear that. <laughs> <laughs> you can kind of hear that. If you're staring on, that. you're definitely... You yeah, just don't you make yeah, an impact. Yeah. It's true. It does make a massive make impact. If there's you no do. one there, then that situation could have been resolved. Yeah, yeah. No one would have seen. Yeah. Listen, if they would have done that in behind the shed somewhere, just them two and Hakeem and the way, it yeah. would have probably just been done. But that's your fault though, because you're right there. No, <laughs> <laughs> because there ain't no fights behind the sheds in school, bro. That's like, nah, true. It's true. It's in the playground, fry everyone, and if yeah. you get yeah. banged in your face and fry everyone, and you're meant to be the man. Yeah, yeah. you're still feeling that pain of your your cheek like yeah. two days later. Yeah. You're going yeah. to school, people are looking at you differently. Like, your oh, face yeah. is bruised. Oh, that's the Boy, worst, man. It's not, I've never been in a fight like that still because I won. But. <laughs> <laughs> But it's one of them situations, yeah. Let's talk about um, Dwayne Bochy's character, right? So, you know who that is, yeah? Dwayne, ain't it Boa? Boa, are you, are you pronouncing no, it? That's his full name, though. Boachi. Oh, is Boachi. that his full name? Yeah. yeah. Oh, okay, same night. Uh, Dwayne, isn't it? Yeah. Right? Yeah. Big up Dwayne, though. That's my guy, man. <laughs> but that character was key as well. Very mm. key. Because we see, like, the first person, spoiler alert, by the way, first person walk away. Exactly. And be like, you know, I'm out. Bye. Oh, yeah. Like, obviously, I don't think it's that easy in real life. It is, man. Like, you, you, you can, but it's, if, if, it's, if you're, you're ready enough, to man. walk along. Mm. Yeah, it's not Liverpool still. No, nah, no, nah, but it's <laughs> not, nah, but no, nah, nah, but you know what I mean? Like, yeah, yeah. if you're ready, well, I say if you're ready, because it ain't like America where you do a sworn sign of flipping thing to get into the gang. All mm. it is, if you and that group of people have been out there doing all of this madness to a group of other people, yeah. you walking away from the group of people that defend you, does not mean the opposite gang has forgiven you for all the things that you've done against course, them. Yeah. So now you are fighting yourself against them, look, instead of the backing you had with your group, yeah. which is why people tend not to leave that group because they know if they're Spending walking by themselves, they're still in trouble. Insurance policy. Yeah. yeah. So someone like Dwayne's character who plays Sneaks decides to walk away. It's kind of literally how he felt. He was, can you say on this show? Uh, I'm not, okay, I won't <laughs> say it. Well, he basically <laughs> says, forget this, forget this, forget everyone, and walks away like, I'll take my chances. Mm. That's basically his thing. He, like, he just didn't care. He just didn't want to be around that no more. And it yeah. takes a lot to do that, you know, because it's it. But I really, I love, I think Sneaks is a dark character. Like if I was to do a sequel, I would definitely bring that character back in there. Yeah, trust because man got his Oyster card and kept it moving. He was gone. <laughs> like, gone. Yeah, yeah. You just never saw him again. Like yeah. done with it. Like forget it. Like, but I, it I makes, love that. It makes sense. Like Latifah, so say you're in that character, right? And you're in that situation. What would you do? Are you walking away or are you staying there? I'm walking away. I can't, I can't. Cause I think about like, would I want like my sister to be in that situation or would I want anyone in my family to be in that situation? Yeah. And cause I would want them to walk away, I'd have to walk away. 
But this is why I like the way he's written it, yeah, because he shows kind of two types of people. He shows obviously the people who might walk away from that situation, and the people who are just seeing it as, you know what, you've been done dirty. I'm going to do whatever I need to get the other other side back. Yeah, you know what I'm saying. It shows. So yeah. What do you think, Carla? Um, I would walk. Well, I wouldn't be in this situation in the first place. But if I was, yeah, I'd walk away. But you know, you never know in the situation because it is a lot of courage. What he does is like a big moment. Yeah, man was moving like we just bare chest. No, but you know it is. He, at that point, at that point, he just didn't care. Well, he's he like, just didn't care. Whatever happened yeah. to him, he was ready to take because he was heartbroken, isn't it? Yeah, I mean, spoiler alert: like something big happened, someone yeah. passed, and obviously that scene, you know, where he's like, "Listen, he would do anything that you told him to." Links back to the older situation again with like older people getting involved and just messing it up. Do you know what I mean? Steep. Yeah. yeah, I mean, let's talk about something that it kind of links in with that as well. And it's like, I, I was looking at a report in it, so I'm just going to read it directly. So it's like, child commissioners for like England, British crime survey was asked like 10 to 15 year olds about just like gang life and stuff like that. Yeah. And 313,000 people said they knew a gang member. 60,000 said they were gang members or siblings of gang members. Like 27,000 were gang members. And 6,560, that's, I don't understand why they did that. They could have said 6,500. Identified as gang members, right? So Steven, you're talking about your brother and kind of how he got you out of it. Like how important, because we want to just stress that point, do you know what I mean? Like how important was that? Because say if your brother was still about that life and just said, you know, you're coming through, like for you, the significance of that. Yeah, it's funny because when I, when I was young and he was trying to talk to me, I still kind of wasn't listening. I was still kind of like doing my own thing. But in the back of my mind, I'll be listening to things he would be saying. Mm. And in hindsight, like looking at looking back on it now and where I am now, I'm happy he did because I wouldn't want to be in a situation that's not where I am now. Yeah, you know yeah. what I'm trying to say? So I'm just happy. I'm just happy. And a lot of the times we, we, we see people that ain't got people like my older brother. And then they're still stuck in that life. They go through it. They go fully through it. Mm. With me, I'm just I'm just happy that he was there to kind of, you know, just take me away from them. I hear that 100%. And like, we need to talk about Killy's character, actually. That's what I was talking I was going to leave it a bit later, but <laughs> that's, a, that's a key character as well. Because yeah. he's yeah. another one who, that role started a lot as well. Because I think a lot of the time, I don't know if anyone in the room has ever been, well, Ratman, maybe you, because obviously this is pretty much your story. But like, has been like, oh, right, what ends are you from? Um, from this ends, blah 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 blah, and then people have acted funny with you because you're from a next place and stuff like that. Like, has that sign that's happened to people before in the room? Like, yeah, that's yeah, that yeah, still yeah. happens yeah, today. It does. You yeah. still get that. You still today. get that. I got asked that. I was never one to ask it because I just I never cared like that. Mm. Like, I would never. If I'm asking, I'm just, I'm just asking girls like, "Well, where are you from?" Like, to like the conversation. But I never asked like the way they asked. Yeah, yeah. I've been asked like that though. It's that tone, isn't it? When I was on the bus, I got on a, I was on the bus and I got asked like that. Like you know, there's a scene on the bus where a group of guys come on the bus. That yeah. scene was written from my whole life, and I got asked, and I was trying to think of a middle area that might not offend anyone. Yeah, yeah. you know, like yeah, I'm doing my maths to calculate. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm trying to yeah, literally I'm trying to think of a Switzerland where you can't I can't be prosecuted, and um, so I've been asked that, but that was common. It was so common. Like where are you from, was so common. I remember sitting down speaking to. I was with the head of Paramount and we're in the trailer editing room. I said, look, we need to put this where you're from him because that there is the question that everyone will relate to in this trailer. Yeah. And like he understood it, he got it. So he got it in there, but it was so vital because that there, that was like, I thought like that was like the badge that every kid went through growing up in the streets of London or anywhere. So um, yeah, it was important. I was even telling raps that like, not too long ago, um, I was just walking and a bunch of kids from one area that is, in problems with the area I'm from, I was just like, ah, oh, where are you from? And me, I've got pride, so I always, I always say it. So you really, you're playing Timmy, no, but you're no, playing. No, <laughs> I've got pride, because I, I know I'm not a gang member, so I always say it. Yeah, yeah. But obviously, that can get you into problems. So I said it straight away. Shoo. What? You're from there? Are you part of them? Are you part of them? So I felt like I'm not a gang member, fam. I'm not a gang member. But obviously, these boys that were there, they kind of recognised, they kind of knew that I knew some of the people from the area, so they kind of diffused it. But... Just things like that, that still happens. Still happens. Still happens. There was, still happens. There, was, there was one time when I was a lot younger and I shouldn't have been at a house party, but you know the ones where you slip out and yeah, you go. And um, like I'm, I never really had major problems, but there was one time where 
I because I, I, I left this house party and it was just sticky. It was mad sticky, and I was like, I was trying to go go home, waiting for the night bus, and then I got grabbed from behind, and then my my phone got jacked basically, yeah. And then one of the oldest from my area, like, was just happened to be around the area, and then he was like, oh, what happened? What happened? And I was like, yeah, my phone got 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 robbed or whatever. And then five minutes later, he comes back with my phone. And I think that's like... A word of story. Uh, <laughs> see, see, so I was lucky. So that's, yeah. yeah, yeah. So I was, I was lucky in that sense. That's the, the one and only time that's ever happened to me. And um, that's because he was one of the... Yeah, he was, he was basically my older at that point in time. And because, you know, he held a certain level of respect in that area. It was just him on his own. It wasn't him with anybody else or whatever. It was literally just... They had only gone like halfway down the road or whatever at this point. And then he just got my phone back and then that was it it was unrobbed you know what i mean but so it could kind of work both ways in the sense of you know if it's going to happen like then sometimes you know there are people who can make it stop and that's one thing that was really key that i really liked about your character because even though you'd seen your character develop well timmy develop it's like he showed some humility because he'd been in that position before where you know he was that kid who was getting that question asked and it was like, oh, yeah, like, you know, yeah, yeah, yeah. where are you from or whatever? And he wasn't involved, you know what I mean? Yeah. Like, I was never yeah. really, really involved. They were just kind of looking for an opportunity. That's part, that's that's part, part of the reason hard. why, that's part of the reason why those little kids, he allowed them. Because he wasn't, he wasn't out there for just anyone. Like, he, like he knew, you can see, man, like, people that just take the mitt, like, you can see who's really... About that life. And who's not. Yeah. Sometimes they're just being bullies, so... If you look properly, you can really tell, is this guy one of them or is he really not one of them? So that's why Timmy came through that. So even though Timmy's a different person in the second half of the film, he still remembers where he came from. He still remembers what it was like to be labelled something that he wasn't. So he wasn't just going to let some, just let them two innocent, blatantly not part of it, you know, get caught up. Yeah, I mean, let's talk about the development of Timmy. Cause like best development man on got, TV in li- film this year. Yeah, 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 man had well, I was thinking he was clean shaven at the start of the film. You got like a goatee aside and turn it to a bad man. <laughs> <laughs> and like obviously like, yeah. that arc is too crazy. Yeah, because like, when I was in the screening, yeah, obviously the tragic side happened. Spoiler alert, you know what I mean? Go watch the film still. But obviously it comes up now blank screen. I heard someone go, "Is the film done?" Yeah, and I done that. Okay. Yeah, yeah. And people, I was like, nah, this will got me done. Blue story is one, but we need a sequel that's actually. I was gonna get mad. Like a, I was, I was gonna yeah. get mad. Yeah, I was no, like, it's nah, funny, it's yeah. funny that you think that because I remember being in the edit, and I remember saying to my editor, "So keep that black screen for another two seconds." <laughs> <laughs> I said, "Why?" Because I want people to think the film's over. Yeah. <laughs> I, want them to think, I want them to think that the film's over, and we're gonna start a new film for them. Literally, it was. I literally saw that as the second part of the film. It was two parts. So he's like, "You sure?" I said, "No, nah, add another second. And then I always I remember saying that to him clearly. So um, it's good that you got. Listen, exactly it was getting to exactly. that point where I was expecting credits to come up. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I, think it was, it was too yeah, I know why you did it, and obviously it's sick. And obviously, whenever it goes, but then when it, it comes back, you see the raw the crowd yeah. though. Yeah. The raw the crowd when they gasp. see, yeah. especially yeah. when they see Timmy. It's like well, Timmy yeah. changed. Timmy. Yeah, Timmy yeah. Yeah. like I saw the crowd went mad. Yeah. Like they loved that. I mean, yeah. for you, so kind of Stephen, like going through that development of playing that kind of like the nice guy, won't harm a fly. So now being younger Mado, like YM and just moving like how you're moving in the film with a character, I should say. How did you kind of mentally take on that that role? Because you're playing two different people um, in one film. Like I said, man, I just kind of use other people to get into character. Like obviously I can relate to some of the things that Timmy and YM was doing. And yeah, just growing up on a council estate, you're exposed to so many different characters, exposed to so many different members that are involved in that life. And yeah, just kind of use those as research to get into that side of Timmy. Yeah. I mean, um, there's a big spoiler alert coming up. So uh, yeah, just have to say that right now. Drum roll. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Carla, go talk about your scene. Okay. Yeah. And uh, basically, when it came to kind of, you know, you knowing what's going on, it's such a pivotal scene as to why we got the transition of, of uh, Timmy in the first place. How are you approaching that for yourself? It was quite emotional, you know, just knowing that like it was happening, obviously, because it's quite like she sees um like the whole group of people like being up to me and like that is quite a scary thing. Like any normal person you see like it's dark, people wearing black hoods, you're kind of like, like, do I need to like 
run over there and she doesn't even hesitate no, like, she just right she's just like yeah. I'm coming. Yeah, literally. <laughs> she's coming. She's like, that's my man. Yeah. Like she's in there. Yeah, like, you know other characters, other female characters, which is why I think the character of Leah was so strong. They would have mm. been like, stop it. Stop. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> On the other side of the road. <laughs> yeah. like, they're not involved at all. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? But like, yeah. she really, she, she really, tried, she, man. Tried. she tried. She literally <laughs> tried with her whole chest. Yeah. Bless her. Like, with her whole chest, she tried, man. The biceps and the triceps weren't there. No, but they they were. she was. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, she was making no sort of impact yeah. on oh. it, but she tried. <laughs> she proper tried, man. But like, in that thing, because like, I was going to say, right, man, you love, uh, you know, doing innocent people dirty in the, in the, the story still. No, 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 it's not innocent <laughs> people. It's does, not human does. beings. What, so Leah were innocent? No, nah, Leah was innocent. Yeah. It's 100% said, she was I was innocent. It's hard to say Leah was gangbanging. You no, know no, nah, nah, of course not. <laughs> no, nah, nah, she didn't deserve to end up how she ended up, man. But something had to turn someone. And mm. I tried to tell everyone, everyone that acts the way they act, something happened. Mm. Whether it's someone that left them or someone that hurt them or something that left them scarred and made them think F the world. Something happens to make people turn the way Timmy turned. Mm. So it needed to be, there was nothing else in the world that would have got Timmy like that. Yeah, yeah. Exactly. And it's yeah. more about the impact of this life on other characters. That's what I feel like you were trying to do. Yeah, I mean, uh, yeah, basically everything. Like, I need the people to see how, because actually you believe now that, raw. Wow, that's how you got, you fully believe it. You don't mm. even think, ah, I think man's just a bad man all of a sudden. Because if you know, it's Timmy always, was never really a shook one. Yeah. Yeah. Always, yeah. He, he always was always yeah. a bit tough. He was always ready. He never was like scared of cat, but he wasn't trying to hurt anyone. If the problem came yeah, to him. Yeah, exactly. Sort of but thing. then it just turned yeah, yeah, yeah. to, if you turn that type of kid in the playground to a dark heart, that's the scariest person you're ever going to meet. And that's what that's what it was with um, Timmy and YM. Like the two different, literally that's how you, we talk about them, Timmy and YM, two different people. Mm. Yeah. I mean, let's talk about the position of power because as we get to the end of the film, and end of our conversation today, it's one of those situations where we see Callie's character, Killy, mm. kind of do something that's a bit mad mm. in the film that affects affects Timmy a lot. And his reasoning why was to do with power and the fact that he, you know, couldn't get a name. Do you know what I mean? Even a cool, just a, you know what I mean? He basically just was a bit jealous. But like do you that. see it as a name? Remember, okay, I never ever mentioned Killy's parents or nothing. You so, don't mention a lot of stuff in this film, but yeah. You can only, you only gave me an hour and a half, mate. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> That's as far as he's concerned, he wants to be like Mado when he grows up. Yeah. He's been working with Mado from a young G, and he's the only young guy that can come around. And then all of a sudden, he introduces his brethren, and his brethren becomes a golden child. Like, to someone, to us looking at him, we see it as ridiculous. But if that little kid only has that male figure, and that male figure is now being pushed to the side because of this guy, and you smoke a lot of weed, which makes you peril. Yeah. That's not that's not a far-fetched thing to do for money. Like, and you ain't got money. Like, that is a common thing for someone to do like that. Yeah. You know? I Jealousy mean, goes a long way, you know? At the same time, yeah. But like, he done a certain action, helped out a few people, but he's still ups though. Yeah. It's, so it's, 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 not, it's not like, oh yeah, well you're fine. Like, you know, they're still gonna come after man after that. Not well, far as I'm concerned, as far as he was concerned, he, Remember that older cousin was smooth, you know. He's been around. He's been around the block a few times. You know how to twang these little young boys to say, mm. you know, what, I'll give you this. Man. We'll be cool, man. Don't watch nothing. As long as my man get my man, we'll be all right, man. We can kind of squash the thing, make look money. At these, look at these lies. You get me, and that's how it goes. <laughs> but that's how it, that's how it works, man. And the um, consequences were dire. You get me. I hear that. I mean, the last thing we got to talk about is like the next generation kind of factor that was at the very end of mm. the film. And a shout out to Rashid for being in it as well. Uh, yeah, big up Rashid. <laughs> there's, there's no wild Jay-Z going on. No. <laughs> <laughs> well, I link, I'm a bad team link up. You know what I mean? I'll tell SB as well. But yeah, go on. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but it's one of those situations where like, obviously you see the olders kind of look at the, the kids now who are about 15 again. So it's changed now. So by now we've got like, what, well, YM's what, 19? Yeah, yeah, that. yeah, yeah. Yeah, and then you got like the 15 year olds now on the block trying to do the rap. And then you get them kind of say, yo, you're, I've never even seen you do a drilling or anything like that. Like for music, just in general, right? When it comes to like drill music, cause it's been a hot topic for a while. And you know, people are trying to shut it down. Crept and Conan did the whole band drill situation. I directed that by the way. There you go. Little bit of self promo right there. Yeah, come <laughs> on. I'm not getting anything out of it. Big up Crept and Conan. <laughs> <laughs> but it's one of those situations. Do you think that like, because we see at the end, obviously he's like, I'm going to avenge everyone right do you think people are ever going to be able to get over stuff that happens in the area fully and just kind of let the music take them and go off into another direction latifa carla if you want to 
jump in? Well, I know a lot of guys have PTSD that's not addressed in that kind of situation, but hopefully they get the help that they need. I think it all starts with like a conversation. I feel like um, not many people like talk about, because I feel like, okay, they go through PTSD, but no one like talks about their feelings. I feel like it's a lot of, like men have a lot of pride. They don't really like talking about like, oh yeah, this hurt me type of thing. And I feel like if more people just spoke about that, I wouldn't say, oh my God, it's gonna get rid of everything, but it might make things better. Yeah, with me, like, of, as 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 good as it is, you know, to talk to people, sometimes it takes external influences to bring somebody out of that situation. Obviously, we saw in the film, um, Tiny Matter was trying to do music. He was trying to make use of the opportunity that was there to take him out of that situation. And, yeah, I feel like there just needs to be more good, good role models and people just need to make use of the opportunities. Yeah, I mean, that's where these platforms come into place. There you go. But mental health, last thing as well, because we see the, you know, another big spoiler that, uh, spoiler. you know, things happen. Mm. And he out, out after all. He, he uh, you know, commits suicide. And that, that is, was... I don't know what you're talking about. I've never seen that in the film. Where? No, <laughs> 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 no, no, listen. Spoilers. He was, he went from the most powerful being in his area, man of the household, to the weakest in the household in his own eyes. And his brother is no longer around at the moment, at the present time, and family. It's just, it was a lot. Who was there to talk to? It was, that's, it was just a lot, man. There was a lot on his shoulders, which is why I thought we needed to kind of, I needed to put something like that in there. Yeah. I think I was, I was kind of like, obviously, like you said, only an hour and a half, but like it had been in future as well when you're kind of making the next one, or maybe not the next blue story, but another thing is to look more into that. Well, if the film, you know, the thing I think sometimes touching on it without being too much on it is even more impactful. Mm. Yeah. Sometimes when you just touch on it, instead of trying to do a whole hour and a half base on it, it leaves with you more. Because a lot of people I've spoken to bring that up. And they're like, oh man, I'd love to hear more about that. And you know, something that will start that alone, just that alone can start a conversation, you know? So yeah. I feel like that moment where Timmy and Mad are in the car and they're talking about their feelings, I think that kind of just, you know, brings that out a bit because it's mm. just a touching moment that you don't really think happens between men. Yeah. I mean, there's there's mad vulnerable moments in there. That moment with Mad and Timmy in the car, that's the, that's the first time we've ever seen them together properly, just them two. Mm. Mm. Then you see why they bonded. You know, they both lost people that they love. Yeah. You know, they, they're both still grieving. And that moment there is so subtle. You don't see in these hood films that you people want to call it, when do you see moments like that between the gangster and the younger like that? It's it's very deep, man. Like, And we touched on it so subtly. And I remember having back and forth with BBC, like, is there any way we can emphasize that, that this is talking about that? I said, listen, if anyone's gone through that, they know what that is there. Like, mm. You don't have to yeah. put a big sign up saying, the depression, talk about scene. Like, it was really <laughs> just so subtle. I think they killed it. I love that scene. I like the way they brushed it off I as love well. That scene. Uh, Madder brushed Madder off, a brushed bit off as well. but that that does yeah. a lot that was, of men that do nice that, though, but that that's, hurts, that's what would happen. Know, that hurts like yeah, yeah. Timmy felt like you know what I thought I could talk to you, but I can't. Just yeah, whatever. Yeah, Let's yeah. just forget it, kind of thing. Like it's deep. But you see, like with obviously because I've I've listened to the 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 music trilogy of Blue Story as well, and like you know the adaptation of it. Like I really want. I mean, obviously we don't have that much time, but like how. How was that for you, kind of adapting it? Because obviously people might go into that movie thinking it's going to be exactly the same as, you know, what mm. you put out, but it's not. And you you kind of expanded it and there's stuff visually that you've you've put in there that just wasn't there before. Yeah, fully. Um, to me, the, the YouTube video was just what I could do at the time. Remember, I was unknown. I wasn't as established as I couldn't. So it was just what I could do. I, if I had what I had, this I was always going to make it a full developed world. You know, to me, that's just a taster. And I didn't want it to people to feel like we've watched the YouTube one, so you'd have to go watch it. And a lot of people still think that, but I think they're going to go just to think anywhere. Let's just see if he's done it exactly the same. But that's why everyone is very surprised when they get towards the end. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, I mean, Blue Story is definitely going to be something that I want loads of people to go out and watch. So do I. What's the final words we're going to say, Ratman? If you haven't watched it yet, go and watch it today. Like, ASAP. Like, Whatever you think about this film, you've probably got it wrong. Like, just watch it and then 
hit me up on socials and let me know how it made you feel. There we go. I want to say thank you to Ratman. Thank you to Steven. Thank you to Carla, the team from Crash. Thank you. thank you. Blue Story Roundtable, we are done and dusted. Hope everyone learns something today still. Yes. Yeah. There we go. That's all we can do. <laughs> <laughs>